The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, Werner Tobin here for the Corn School. Today we're at the Southwest Agricultural Conference, University of Guelph's Ridgetown campus. I'm joined now by Dr. Fred Bilo, University of Illinois. Fred, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Bernard. You just finished up a 45-minute presentation on the future management for high corn yield. What it's going to take to grow high yield corn. I want to. I want to talk about. Take us through this narrative because there's, a, I guess, a big reveal at the end here. It's a. It's a really interesting concept, and you're going to be talking a lot about it. But let's start with you know, the management factors that, you know that growers have been doing and need to continue to do that. And it really starts with fertility. It does. So I, I tell you, Bernard. In, in research, what you want to do is you want to look down the road. You want to you want to say, well, you know, what do we need to do in the next five, ten years in order to keep uh, increasing mm -hmm. corn yields? And, and I'm blessed with the fact that uh, I work with a lot of grad students, and they got a, they, you know, they got a driving desire <laughs> to learn. They they want to get that degree at the end as well. So I, I was able to uh, take a lot of previous students' work and sort of compile it together in a little message to get the growers excited here. And, and I, I tried to I tried to ask them questions. You know what? What's the factor under their control, meaning not the weather, yeah. that is the biggest impact on corn yield? And uh, I don't think this is a surprise to many people, but the, uh, the factor that drives corn yield is fertility. Yeah. Corn yield starts with, ends with fertility. All growers know how important nitrogen is, but let's not discount some of the other nutrients and micronutrients that play a big role. So I, I think I spent about half the time that I had yeah. allocated to me talking about fertility, the, the amounts how I think it has to change in order to, to, to grow high corn yields. Yeah, I mean, you talked about, you know, that initial period, that peak and grain fill, I mean, that, that sort of flow of, of nitrogen uptake. Um, you also talked about the importance of application of, uh, of nitrogen and the correlation with root structure. Tell us about that. Yeah, we, we did. So, so, you know, we looked at, uh, if, you, if you look at... Uh, when when plants take fertility up, well, every nutrient's different. I use nitrogen as an example, and I showed that there's you know there are really three distinct phases of nutrient uptake. There's that the initial phase where, where we're setting yield potential. Um, there's that peak demand. That's the key. That's when we're making the business end of the plant. You know the leaves and the reproductive potential. And then there's the back end, which is related to to leaf health and and, and kernel weight. And so what what I showed is that. Uh, how important peak demand is. Yeah. If you don't have the nutrition available to meet peak demand, guess what? You limit your yield potential. As you increase yield, the amount of, of nitrogen or any nutrient needed per day during that key time period, it goes up. Yeah. I mean, you simply can't grow the yield without it. You won't necessarily see it as a deficiency. So I, I, I showed I showed for 230 bushel corn, the, the peak demand is seven pounds of N per day. For 300, it's 10, mm -hmm. all right? And then, and then the question is, okay, this is a lot of nutrition that I gotta have in a short amount of time, and how am I gonna assure that mm -hmm. that's available? And uh, told him that, that, that's where we came to placement. Yeah. I'm a huge proponent of fertilizer placement. Yeah. And Y drops. Yeah, well, Y drop is a way, yeah. is an in season way to do uh, fertilizer placement. You know, I, I posed the question why is placement so important? I mean, the, the source, the rate, the time, these are all important too. But uh, placement is so important because guess what? The root system is not as large as we were yeah. led to believe. I, I showed the horizontal spread of a corn plant's root system is six to eight inches. Now, if we're in a 30 inch row and, and the corn plant has only got a horizontal spread of six to eight inches, that means there's a lot of soil that's not being tapped by roots. All right? That's why I think placement is so important. You know, particularly, particularly as fertilizer gets more expensive and we got environmental uh, concerns about it, why not place it where the root is and increase the chance of uptake? Yeah. And you also talked about, um, you know, hybrids, new hybrids uh, and new technology. How important is, is having, you know, the best hybrid available? So I, I think I, this is one of the other questions I pose to the growers. Um, what's the most important decision they make every year? And that's their hybrid selection. And uh, you know, I, I want to have some science rather than emotion go into the hybrid selection. And I think growers are, are shocked at, at the variation in yield that can be associated with the hybrid selection in a given year. Mm. E even, even with management, we, we see a 50 bushel 
difference between the highest and the lowest yielding hybrid. Obviously, you select the best one, you're pretty darn happy. But, you know, 50 bushels, just multiply that by the commodity price. That's a super important decision. Um, and so I, I tried to point that out to growers. I, I, I told them that um, with relative maturity, usually the fullest relative maturity for the region has the highest yield. And usually the newer ones tend to out yield the older ones. That's a sad fact of life, but uh, you know that's what the seed industry is about. Think of, think of the that seed chipper runs every day, uh, it's 24 hours a day, and so there's always going to be the next yeah. best yeah. hybrid. And then this is the part I think I was most excited about. Um, I posed the question: um, Do you think all hybrids re respond to fertility, or especially fertility placement, the same? And I think I think they all said no, but they didn't know why. Right. And that, that goes on with what happens below ground. You would be shocked at the variation in root architecture that exists among commercial farm hybrids. Um, and, and that architecture is fairly consistent across geographies and environments. Why not use, yeah. why not characterize and use that architecture to say, this hybrid will respond better to side dress. This hybrid will respond better to, to starter fertilizer. And so I think, uh, you know, if you, if you think about the corn plant, you know, roots are sort of sight unseen, um, and they're one of the last yeah. unexplored horizons yeah. of, uh, of what I think we need to characterize mm -hmm. and do to increase yield. I want to get back into the roots here in a minute, but you, you talked about above ground. Um, you, you, you talked about um, short stature corn, smart, you know, corn, um, prescient, the, the bear product that you're working with, um, where does that fit in your thinking? So, you know, normally I would have told you, and this has been my experience most of my most of my career, big corn, big yield, right? I mean, that's that every grower's noticed that. Um, but do you know that uh, corn is the last major grass species to be dwarfed? Yeah. You know, rice and wheat. The, the green revolution was all about shorter stature, and 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 uh, so that that technology's been around for a long time. Uh, and, and I think it's finally time that we adapt it to the corn crop, short statured corn. Mm. And, and I talked about uh, what I think is the three, the trifecta of advantages, the three advantages to short corn. Obviously, if you have a windstorm and you're shorter uh, and you have your ear lower, you, you, you're not, you may not blow over as much. I, you know, I can't tell you how hard it is to make an in-season application with a, with a Hagee or a high boy on tall corn. And then, uh, but what I was really excited about, I, I showed the growers, I hope I showed them, that um, if you grow less stock, particularly less stock right below the air, it can re-divert the energy that would have gone into growing that stock into a higher yield potential. And, and, and that, I think that's an exciting aspect of short corn. Yeah. I want to draw us through the big conclusion here, and one of the things that you talked about, you know, as we get we move through the presentation, was um, the the factors that growers can control, and uh, you really want you drew really down to plant population, and that is what is probably going to take you to your th thoughts in the future. Yeah, so you know, I, I ask growers, and they don't think about this very often. I ask them, you know, what what's the management practice that in your career has changed the most, and what what it has to continue to change, and that's plant population. So plant population, plant density, seeding rate, plant stand, I mean, these are all names for the same thing. It's plants per unit area. And I showed that uh, in the U.S., and I'm, I'm pretty sure Canada's the same way, that plant, plant population over the last 50, 55 years has steadily gone up. And, and, it's gonna, and it needs to continue to go up. And one of the reasons it needs to continue to go up is plant population is a component of corn yield. You make corn yield into a math equation, everything's math. Uh, so, so corn yield is a product function of how many plants, how many kernels are in each plant, and the weight of each individual kernel. And you have to change one of those yep. in order to increase yield. There's no other way to do it. Um, obviously, I'd like to change them all. Um, that's not, not an easy task because they're negatively related. But I pose the question to growers, you know, sitting here today, which one do you have the most control over? Mm. And it's plants per acre. Mm. I mean, they have to purchase the seed, but... Um, um, Plants per acre, I, I, I think, I think that uh, that is the factor that has to change. There is a caveat, though, uh, and, and that's the, uh, the row spacing we currently use. Yeah. And that brings us to the big reveal here, shall we say. Um, Fred, you basically threw up a slide that you think the future of corn is 20-inch rows or narrow rows, um, and it speaks to that fertility, 
it speaks to those na that architecture of the roots, it speaks to the pan population, and all those things roll in to a future for Nara Rose. Yeah, so uh, I, I obviously, you know, I'm not the one buying the equipment, but uh, and I know that that's a, that's a huge expense, yes. but I'm, I'm convinced the future of corn has to be Nara Rose. I mean, if you go back into the early 60s, we were, you know, we, we had 40 inch and 38 and 36 inch rows, and now we're mostly in 30s. And uh, gosh, in, in South America, they're already in 20 inch rows. So this is something they already do better for us. I think the future of corn has to be narrow rows. Um, I tried to show the growers a couple of reasons why. Um, you know, one reason is even at the same population, you can intercept more early light. I mean, why, why not cover the ground with, uh, with green faster? You could manage a higher density of plants. Um, but I think here's one of the key things that kind of kind of it doesn't surprise us after we knew it, but it sure did when we discovered it. As you increase the population of plants, each plant has a smaller root system. So as I go 1,000 more plants per acre, I lose two and a half percent mass of my root system. Mm. All right. Now th this is a this is a recipe for disaster. I mean, because roots take up water and mineral nutrients, and if I keep pushing the population and I have smaller roots, I'm under potential for more stress. I, you know, I, I got to have higher nutrient levels. Um, what we also discovered is when we go to a narrow row we gain back some of the mass that we lose as we increase the population. And you put up some numbers here that you can actually get 7.1 inches spacings in planting uh, in that row in 20 inches, so you get that space back. Yeah, yeah, you could manage, you could manage a higher density of plants. Um, plants don't like to be too close. What, what, what we've seen is that uh, when, when we go to a narrow row, a 20 inch row, we gain back the root mass, the equivalent root mass of 6,000 plants. And it's very consistent as we uh, across a, a range of densities. And this, I think, uh, is why narrow rows work everywhere. You know, we, we learned that they only work uh, in the northern latitudes where we have a long day and a short season. But that's actually not true. Yeah. Um, think about if you knew um, you had soil that didn't hold water very well. Wouldn't you like to have a bigger root system, even at the same density? So I, uh, I, you know, I try to look at the advantages of, uh, of narrow rows, and, and that is clearly one of them. Um, I, uh, I think I summarized a lot of our data. I mean, over the last six years, a bunch of locations, 160 hybrids, different densities. On average, it's 12 bushels yeah. for us. Now, some hybrids better than others, and there's a few hybrids that don't like narrow rows. But um, in research, you have to look at what it's going to take to continue to manage more plants, to continue to be able to feed those plants, uh, and, you know, with what's going on below ground. Yeah. Well, Fred. Um, a great presentation here today, and we, we just scratched the surface. You got so much more. Uh, I'd encourage everybody to check out the Southwest Agricultural Conference uh, replays online. You can get Fred's uh, full presentation, and uh, I know you'll be uh, talking about this uh, throughout the winter. I will, Bernard. And, and I, I, you know, I, what, what I really want to do is bring useful information to growers. Mm. You know, unbiased, useful in information that uh, they can use. I'm not telling everybody to go out and change, but remember in research, you have to look down the road and you have to say what is what is possible, and then the growers make that decision. Great insight, sir. Thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure. Thank you.